Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye so, so my theme today is not taking it personally. And uh, this is, this is a, a, a very big topic because I believe nearly all resistance, if not all resistance, comes from taking things personally. And, and so that's, a, that's quite a big claim, isn't it? Who thinks that's a big claim? All, all things, uh, all resistance is created by taking it personally. So, so if you think about what it is that you want to create, uh, taking it personally means that you believe it will mean you are more validated as a human being. More validated if you have this uh, and less validated if you have this. So for example, there are certain conditions in life that you would prefer, true? There are certain conditions that you believe are better off and certain conditions uh, that you, you believe uh, are worse off. And so a condition is, is a state of being. It's a outcome, a circumstance. Okay. So, so for example, I'll let you know a condition that I used to not allow. I would never allow myself to be seen as lazy. In fact, if I look at my 30 something years of life until I had this realization, I would prefer to have failure, heartache. I would prefer to not have any money than I would to be told I was lazy and not a hard worker. Now, isn't that crazy? Like I, I even had a sense when I lost it all, of, well, at least I, you know, I'll just work hard and make it happen. And it was, it was, it's so interesting to think about, isn't it? And so I've got to ask you, you know, well, what conditions are not allowed to exist for you? And how have you made things personal? I, I just think it's interesting. And so for me, I made it personal, made, made things mean something to me, had these certain ideals and ideas that, that I'd been trying to resolve for a long time. And so, so when I say don't take things personally and that success isn't personal, it sometimes takes a while for this to, to seep through the, uh, the barrier of old beliefs that are there. Okay, we, we, we have one, one or two really big beliefs in society. And, and the main one that I see is that we are our results. Your results are a reflection of you. Does that make sense? We are our results. If you have success, you're better. If you don't have success, you're a failure. You see, we see the, the billionaire and then we see the homeless person. And unconsciously, we judge that. True. Unconsciously, we go, yeah, that person better, that person not. You see, we see the, the overweight person and then the healthy person, and we have an unconscious, we have an unconscious bias. We see the healthy and the sick. Are you getting this? And, and so and so you might think, no, Chris, this isn't true. Well, your our behavior, our behavior shows the opposite right? Your behavior shows the opposite. I say, no, Chris, this is, uh, uh, don't believe this as a society. No, well, our behavior shows the opposite. You know, we, we, we all strive to go into make something of ourselves, become something, have a influence, have a following, write a good book. You know, we create a great family, but why? Because we live in a in, in under a premise that that means something about us. What if I told you that the cancer patient and the the cancer cure are just as validated? Does that make sense? What if, what if you were to realize 
that there's no way for you to be a more validated human being, more viable. We, we, we're in this idea or ideal that we can increase our worth as a human being. Does this make sense? What did Kerry write? Everyone's going on about what Kerry read. Let me have a look. Back in March, a free agent we thought I should do. Oh, good for you. Good for you, Kerry. That's nice. Nice. So, so just, just consider this for a moment. You're already whole. Just consider this for a moment. You're already whole. There's no way to increase your wholeness. There's no way to increase your validity as a human being. This is, this is it. This is it. There's no way to lose this. There's no way to belong in your family structure any more than you already belong to your family. There's no way to not belong to them. There's no way to be uh, more important or less important. Does this make sense? There's simply just no way to be more loved by society or less loved. There's just simply no way. This is, this is it. And so here's the point. Your success, what you create, won't change you. Your failure won't change you. You, you become to own the moment, to own the moment. Because when the outcome doesn't change you, you own the moment. And owning the moment is very important. That's the magnetic moment. So my question to you is, you, you, you want to create more sales. So you put on a webinar and ask people to buy from you and they say, no, how do you feel? You see, you go put a, a video on Facebook you think is good and people say, that's rubbish. How do you feel? So you've made it personal. You get, your, you get a sale, you make more money. Yeah. You, you make a bad decision, you lose money. Do you see? Do you see how we've made it personal? Yes? You see how you're making the results personal. And to the extent that you make success personal is the extent that you make failure personal. They're both ends of the same stick. Does that make sense? You cannot pick up one without picking up the other. True. So the more you think, if I do this, then I'll be this, or the more you think if this happens, then that, the more you're knocked out of the present moment and the more you're giving all your power away to outside conditions in an un, undeniable attempt to try to validate yourself more through what it is you achieve. And this is really interesting because it comes from childhood. It comes from childhood where we realize, wow, we're an individual. I must do something in order to get something. And if I do something else, then I'm bad. So where does this come from? It comes from a childhood condition of what is good and what is bad. Does this make sense? That, that's where it comes from, right? This is what's good, this is what's bad. And so we have to ask ourselves that question, what was defined as being good and what was defined as being bad? And what did we have to do? Morning, Dean. Morning, all of you that just jumped on. Afternoon and evening. <laughs> You see, what did we have to do in order to, to try and, uh, and obtain that which you were not? Say that again. 
what did you have to do to try to obtain that which you are not? Very random uh, story you got told then, didn't it? <laughs> Very random. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> so this this idea is is a big one. And the the idea is that you are separate from what you're creating. You are the creative spirit that's creating. You are the creative spirit that is creating and you've always been creating. Does that make sense? You've always been creating. You're not your body. You're not your family. You're not your money. You're not your relationships. You're not your success. You're not your health. You're the creative spirit that's creating that. Does that make sense? You're not that. That's just what you create. And it's just a choice. And no creation is better or worse than another creation. So we've got a spectrum. What's better? What's worse? Hmm. The creator is not the creation. The creator is not the creation. And that's a big concept to wrap our heads around because we have been placed in a structure that has said the opposite. You are your marks in school. You are your body. And this body is good and this body is bad. You are your success. You are your failure. You're bad if you don't have this or you're good if you have this. Is it true? And so it's time, it's time for us to realize we're not our creation and you're creating it. And so here's my question. Why have you created what it is that you have created? Why have you created? You're the creative force. You're the creative spirit. You're very good at creating. You're very good at creating. You've created it all. You've created it all. And, and I used to just create a way to always be busy because what was not allowed was being lazy. So why have we created it? So we need to get ourselves into this idea that you're not your creation. And, and this is how someone who was blind for 20 years can see again, or how I got a message the other day about someone who did a one-on-one -on -one session with me who couldn't walk, now they're walking or how a, a, a child listened to one of my recodes had a terror of spiders the next day was picking them up. This is how uh, we went from unknown to taking over the personal development industry. This is how I get a message about someone going in for their, uh, their scan of their tumor and the doctor looking at them going, why don't you have a tumor anymore? And that is because we decided to become the creative force to actually take control of our superconscious creation and create rather than just holding on to the pattern that we decided at age two or age three, you see. And that pattern that we decided at age two or age three is really a problem solving pattern. True, it's really a problem solving pattern. This is what's, here's the pattern. This is what's incomplete about me. And so I'm going to try to resolve that. Make sense? This is what's incomplete about me. This is what's not whole about me. And so I'm going to spend a lifetime trying to become whole. Does this make sense, guys? You are not your creation. You think, well, if I can do this, I can become whole. But what's the premise behind that? I'm not whole. If I do this, I'll get more love. If I do this, I'll get dad's validation. If I do this, mom will actually care for me. You see, in this und un undying attempt 
to try to resolve this wound. And, and it's, it's completely impossible. It's completely impossible. And so, so the way, the way we've got to do this is we must separate ourselves from our structure, separate ourselves from our creation, rather separate what we're, who we are as a creative spirit and what we are creating and realize that if you're creating someone saying no to your offer as a coach, you just got to create something different. It has a different set of instructions, but someone saying no to you as a coach doesn't make you any more or less of a human being. See, some of us are creating non-rejection. True. This is interesting. Some of us are creating non-rejection under the guise that we're trying to create money. We're just creating non-rejection. Some of us are some of us are, are creating uh, not working too hard under the idea that we're creating a business. We're not creating what we think we're creating. You see, I wasn't creating a business for the first 11 years in business. I was just creating a way to stay really, 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 really busy to avoid the truth, which is being lazy because being lazy was not good enough. Does that make sense? I wasn't creating business or wealth. I was creating that. So I'd find ways to have business partners die or people let me down or start. One time I started eight businesses in 12 months. I had a, an MLM business here and I had a this and I was so busy. See, I was actually, that's what I was after. And so you got to ask yourself, what have you really been after? You know, it's very interesting when we ask that, am I really trying to create a relationship or am I really just trying to avoid that. And so, so here's the thing is, in order to get into this, you must come to a place where you're already whole. Being whole is the goal. Because once you're whole and you're not trying to complete yourself, when you already are enough, worthy, perfect, when you already belong and are capable, when you already are all of that, and you're not trying to complete yourself through a creation, then you're free to just create. You see, whenever you're trying to complete yourself through a creation, if I just have money, I'll finally be safe. If I just have this, if I just have that. Do you see how we're trying to complete ourselves by things? Interesting, isn't it? When you, when you, just, when you just become whole already. And so that's the question, really, isn't it? If, if there was no way for you to be more or less than, than everything, what would you choose to create? Uh, from collapsing or changing the structures from time? I don't 100% uh, understand the question. Would you be able to put it in the question box here on Zoom um, so, I can, and, and so I can make sure I don't miss it? Is this making sense to you guys? Is this, is this thanks, Sean. Uh, just if you could rephrase it somehow. Is this making sense? You are not your creation. The artist is not the painting. It's not. You're creating that. The creative spirit isn't, it can't be more or less. You are the creative spirit. You just get to create. It's not going to change you. You get to be, that's when I say you will be it before you see it. Because when you become the creative spirit, that's when you see all creations can happen. They don't change you. They don't change you because you already are it. Julia says, if you don't um, need less or more, the focus is simply being. You, you know, I, I would just say, I'd say no to that. I would rephrase it though. I would say, when you're already whole, you just create what you love. 
Does that make sense? I'll just rephrase it. I wouldn't say yes or no. I'd just be like, uh, it doesn't really, you know, I don't like this idea of just being. And uh, it might just be semantics. But when I hear the words just being, I hear someone thinking that their end result is just this um, weird, you know, yogi sitting on the top of a, a mountain, uh, you know, connected to all time and space. Okay, life's life's not about uh, that. I don't believe that a person that goes off to the Himalayas and sits there and meditates. I don't believe that they master this reality. I believe that they check out. See that I believe that the the true the the the, the true creators have that Zen stoicism while they are actually here creating. So they have that ability, but in the moment, as they're creating joy and fun, see what I'm saying? They don't need to sit in a cave to have that. They have that in the moment as they're, as they're creating. Does that make sense? Just, just my opinion, yeah. Someone who's looking for Zen is coming from a, a, a place where they they believe that they can't have it now that they need to they need to run away from everything to have it you see and as soon as you're in that structure you know and guys let's think about this weird structure of work hard to then not work hard right this is this whole you know retirement structure it's just, it's so weird it's so weird because it, it literally sets people up to basically have nothing you know nothing there i love doing what i do i love doing what i do and you know and so why retire why uh, why the rolling stones still playing music you know because <laughs> they love it right and so that whole premise of do this to then not do it is just it's just really 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 weird really weird it's only the last hundred years that that's even been a thing you know, that you're going to go do this and then you will, then you get this, this idea of not doing it. So yeah, do this thing you hate and then you won't do it. It's just, it's just weird. It's just, isn't that weird? <laughs> isn't that a really, really, really weird way to do life? You know, I think it's weird. And, and it comes from a, it comes from a, an idea or, a, or a place in us that, that says, well, I can't just have what I want now. I have to sacrifice and then have it. It's, it's, pro it's probably quite, you know, it's probably quite, you know, huge. Now you have it all now. You have life now. You have everything as you want it now. You create it. But here's the here's the big one. All of us, when I say you can just have it now, all of us have an idea that we don't have it in us to have it right now. When I say you can just have it all right now, all of us go, well, no, because I've got to. True, don't we all do that? I've got to do this, I've got to have that. And notice, as I say to you, you can have it all now, you can. Notice how aspects of you want to deny that truth. And, and that's what I want to ask you. How do you not deny that truth? Well, no, I can't. No, I can't. Chris, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make more money. No, no, I can't. Chris, I gotta, I gotta, and just notice that aspect of you. Is it true? You can have it all now exactly as you want it. There's part of you that just believes you don't have it in you. There's something missing. There's something you must complete first. Is it true? I must complete this about myself. I must learn more. I must fix this. I must lose a bit of weight. I must, I must, I must, I must. Rob's put in a question. Happiness is not having what you want. Happiness is wanting what you have. I just think happiness is happiness. I don't think happiness is being, I just think happiness is, is being happy. I just don't think it has any relation to anything else. Just, it, it's, 
Yeah, so 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 all of us have a way that we don't. So how do I do it, Chris? Give me the formula. Some of us want the formula. But Chris, you don't know. I've got to have this much money to have that. But you don't know. I've got to have, I've got to have all this. What if I told you that all of those things you've got to have is that part of you playing out that's making this all personal, realizing that you can't be whole now, you see? So we've got all these ideas, all these ideals, all these pop psychologists who have put little sayings out there like happiness is is having what you want, or whatever it was, right? Whatever that saying was, you know, it's wanting what you have, you know. Happiness is just happiness, <laughs> you know. It's not anything else other than that. Yeah. And so, <laughs> right on, Jody. <laughs> and so... I see so many people, I talk to a lot of people, they come into this work and everything's here. Yet an aspect of them can't stop wanting to fix themselves. So I see them, they pop off into another piece of work or they start telling me how they're doing this other thing on top of it or how they're doing all these other things, you know. Others, others join this work and then don't show up. There's so the, that part of us that won't allow us just to have it now, it pulls on us in the psychological tension in, a, in an idea that we just can't have it now. Does that make sense? That we just can't have it. <laughs> see, how can you have it now? You must let go of wanting things. And see, See how much is built up around this. Of course, you can have it now and still love to create. See, having it all now doesn't change that time is still going to be moving and you want to create what you love. Only someone that can only be motivated by scarcity or lack or what they don't have can only take action under a premise that uh, I must not have it to go for something, you see. <laughs> and, and I'm just sharing, guys. This is true for me. It's true for you. It's true for all of us is that once we really, truly understand that we are not our creation, that we get to have it all now, and then over here we create whatever it is we choose to create because we are the creative spirit but we already have it not from a place of lack or a place of not having it from a place of already having it and then still choosing only when you get that is when everything just opens up yet we live in a society in a world that tells us that we're not good enough unless we have this we're not worthy unless we know this we're not smart unless we do this we're not a good dad or mom or father we're not we don't have a body like this you see and so everything's made it personal but you, you are the creative spirit. You have it all now. You have the moment now. You have everything now. You have everything you could ever have now. You have abundance now. You have love now. You have joy now. You have time now. You have breath in your lungs now. You have everything. You, When you arrive and understand that you are here and then what you choose to create is over here, it's no longer personal. And when it's no longer personal, you have no resistance to it, right? And when there's no resistance to it, it just happens and you stay the same. You stay the same. You stay the same. It just happens. See, we think that if I have this, then I'll be different. And it completely screws everything up. We have these ideas. And so, so there's, there's six main, there's six main ones, aren't there? The, the, the biggest, the biggest main one is that I'm not worthy. So when I say, guys, you can just have it all now and then create whatever you love. You know, but I got to be worthy of having that, man. I got to be smart to have that. I got to be, I got to take, I got to be worthy. How many of you have to build worth up in order to have something? 
who has to build their worth up. I got to be worthy of it, Chris. I can't just, who can't just have things? See, if I just turned up to you and I said, hey, look, here you go. Here's, here's all the money in the world. Well, I didn't earn that, Chris. I got to be worthy of having that. He said, why, well, why can't you just have it? What's it got to do with you? I've got to earn their respect, earn their trust. I got to, so I've got to be worthy of it. I've got, to, I've got to be worthy for it. What if I told you that your worth has nothing to do with having it? <laughs> I know some people that lead countries, that lead businesses, that have amazing families, but, but they're not really worthy of having that. They just have it. It's separate. And then others are really worthy, but they don't have it because they're just in the wrong structure, you see? What about, how about not good enough, right? But Chris, I'm not good enough to have that. I'm not, I'm not as articulate as you. I'm not, I can't speak like you. I can't have a coaching business like you. I'm not, I'm not good enough. Chris, I haven't done enough in my life. I can't coach others. I'm not good enough. I can't have a woman like that. My body's not good enough. My, this isn't good. I can't have a man like that. I'm not, I can't have, see what I'm saying? How many do I have? A, I'm not good enough. So I've got to become good enough. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to enroll in lots of courses. I'm going to get lots and lots of degrees. I'm going to become good enough. I'm going to, I'm going to just take, I'm going to just obsess about becoming good enough instead of obsess about having it. <laughs> you know, this person has books on parenting, books on relationships, books on business, taken courses forever. And it's never, ever enough. And even when they have what could be enough, then they're, they're nitpicking it. See, so it's not enough, see? And so they have this idea, and this is the underlying condition that they're trying to resolve about themselves to be good enough. Does this make sense? You know, the next one is trying to be capable. Well, okay, yeah, okay, Chris, or oh, mate, I, I could have it now, but I'm just not capable of having that. You don't know. Dude, I don't have enough money. Can't, not capable of doing it. This person never has enough resources. I don't have enough money. I don't even have the time to have. I can't have everything. I don't have enough time. I'm not smart enough. I need to get more smarts. I'm not capable of having it. I'm not allowed to be capable. I'm not allowed to keep. I'm not. I gotta. I gotta be capable. I don't have enough resources to have that. And and so when we truly get that that there are people that are smarter than you, uh, and there's people that are that that have nothing, and people that are you know, born in all sorts of different situations and circumstances and, and have created without needing to fix themselves. It, it's just going to blow your mind when you truly realize and you look at success, look at successful people. I promise you see most of them are dysfunctional. <laughs> they're dysfunctional, meaning they, then they, they're not necessarily worthy of it or good enough for it. In fact, some of the people that have the, the, the best musicians or businesses on the planet you know, they're, they're not smarter than you. They're not more talented than you. Does this make sense? Because it's actually not about us. See, imagine if talent, imagine if talent was what created success, you know? See, we're told that, oh, some people are just talented. Well, guys, I've met many musicians that don't have the success of others. They're just in the wrong structure. I've seen amazing books, by the way, there is amazing coaches on this call. Amazing at helping amazing healers. Amazing. They're here. They're here because they've just been in the wrong structure. Who's, who's that, by the way? Well, it's just because I'm not lucky. I'm not. No, guys. It's because most of us are in a structure. Most of us are in a structure that we think we got to change something about ourselves. I've hung out with the biggest coaches on the planet. We're all in a movie together. Some of them say they're vegetarian and I've seen them eat meat, you know? Like they're not, they're, they're, and I would call that a liar. <laughs> they're not even good people. <laughs> it blew me away. <laughs> so what's the point here? The point is, It's not personal, meaning you don't improve your validity as a human being 
if you get the conditions and circumstances you desire and you don't uh, downgrade your validity as a human being if there's results you don't desire. They're not connected. They're not connected. That's completely separate. This is you over here. You're a pure creative spirit full of love and joy and pessimism and doubt and confusion and worry. And you're, you're, that's you, right? Right. You have loves, you have fears, you have all these things. That's you. And then over here are the things you choose to create. And these things are separate from you because they cannot improve on the pure creative spirit that you are. Does this make sense? Completely separate completely separate and once you get that what you're creating isn't you that you're the parent of it that you are separate from it that you are the artist it's the painting and the painting doesn't make the artist any better it's just art it's just what it is once you truly get that then you just this can just happen this can just happen i'll only you know you're going to all become millionaires if you choose that but you'll just be the same uh, it won't change you at all it won't change you at all. You'll all create amazing bodies and amazing families and amazing, amazing things. But it won't, it won't change you. You see? It, it's, it's just a, it's a thing that you create. Make sense? You are a creative spirit. You have it all now. And you're creating these things. However, what you will do is you'll continually try to make it about you. And you'll know that you make it about you whenever there's resistance. So what we really do with the superconscious work is we connect to the superconscious and we say, hey, look, superconscious, see how you're making this about you. Can you treat that and bring it back to wholeness? Do you see? And that's why the work is so easy here. It's because of structure. It's because of structure. You can be everything and anything you choose to be. Your creation is separate. It's only when we've misappropriated, misappropriated uh, our value or our worth to an outcome and to the outcome failing or succeeding that resistance pops up. Right. All of us have experienced this. You, you think about an outcome, then you have it, then you're the same. You get married, you find a new relationship. Things change for a bit, but then you're the same person, right? You make a bunch of money, you lose a bunch of money. You're kind of the same. Once you, once you get over the how you made it personal, you notice you're the same. The day after you win a gold medal, you go back to the gym, <laughs> you know? You're the same person. You're the same freaking person. All right, let me have a look at some questions here. Is this good stuff? <laughs> Emery says, if I do my lenses and clipal lessons, I'll become certified. So I, do I be certified before I see it? I mean, becoming certified is a creation. You're not certified. That's a current reality that you're moving towards being certified. That's a current reality, desired reality. That's what's happening. It's simply being certified doesn't change your validity as a human being. It's simply just a creation that you're creating. Yeah. Sean, so changing all structures from the creator within is, is being or whole. So is it like trying to burn out all your desires? Well, not really, not really. It's about understanding that you're a pure creative spirit. You have it all and that you basically get to create what it is you like. But as you create, guys, you, you go from a place of not having the creation to having the creation. Does that make sense? Current reality, future reality, then there's a thing to go that... The biggest problem is you're over here, your creation of what you're creating is here. The reason why there's any resistance is you think if you have more money or a better business that all these things will be better, it will be different, it will be amazing. And you think if, if you don't have it or you fail, you'll get judgment. You think that you're bad. You think that this is associated to you. Does that make sense? Instead, you got to understand that they are not connected. Whenever there's resistance, it's you making it personal. 
Does that make sense, Sean? It's you making it personal. So the structure is that we separate. Yeah, thanks. Good question. Uh, Chris, do you believe the structure that we have been was evolutionary for humanity? Well, it's a good question. Uh, I won't read the rest of it um, because I know the answer for you. So uh, this, this structure, guys, is 100% necessary. So let me ask you, how many of you had an initiation into adulthood where you overcame your wounds and became an adult? Any, anyone? It was just like me. You, you had, a, had a party with some people you don't know anymore and you got really drunk. See, 90% of us have no initiation process between childhood and adulthood. They're actually very separate uh, ways of being. In childhood, we actually transition from pure creative spirit to individualism. And through individualism, individualism is, is needed to understand how you're an individual so you can have an individual experience. Okay. Uh, so, so some of you haven't got that question. Very few, if any, had a proper initiation to let go of childhood wounds and orientate as an adult. True? Like, uh, okay, if you go to indigenous cultures, okay, you will see that there is a ritual, a rite of passage that moves someone from childhood to adulthood. And part of it is facing their incompleteness and learning to trust themselves. They're normally taken out into the wilderness. They have to face their fears. What they really have to face is how they, as children, believe they don't have it in them to create. Does that make sense? And they have to overcome some really tough things. But what do they learn that they have it in them to create now? This is very important. I get chills right now telling you. Who else is getting chills? This is very important. Very important because in childhood, we learn that we must listen to our parents, that we must, we're actually not, we don't really have free will as children. <laughs> if our parents uh, go eat a certain way, we eat that way. We don't have the ability to get our own food. Does that make sense? We're, we're very, we, we learn certain structures. But most importantly, we learn that we are an individual. We're no longer connected to, to so we learn how to be us. This orientates us because without contrast, without understanding that we're an individual, we can't have all these beautiful emotions that we're here to feel. You see, the only way to feel happiness is to feel sad. And the only way to feel these, to feel loss and to feel pain is, and that's what it's here. We have to get this orientation and the orientation is our self-conscious ego that orientates us to the world. So it's very important and it's childish. So we go through wounds and we learn how to be an individual. Does this make sense? What we pick up, does this make sense, everyone? What we pick up is we pick up that we don't have it in us. Okay. As a child, we think that we don't have it in us. I don't have it in me to have what I want. See, because we don't. We simply don't. Our parents give to us. Par like, that's how it is. What has to happen, usually what used to happen, was there's initiation where you then learn you do have it in you. You see? Just pause on that. Just pause on that. I do have it in me to create what I want. Feel that for a second. I do have it. I don't need another book or a formula or a new way of thinking or new beliefs. I'm good. I have it. I'm whole. I do have it. It's me. I can go. I can create those outcomes. I'm a creator. I'm a creator. I do have it in me. I don't need to be more worthy or less worthy. I don't need to fix this or change a belief structure or download some abundance codes or or trip out on ayahuasca or change my diet. I just I I have it in me. I can. I, I, I can create a great body if I want a great body. I can create a great, I have that. I can create that. You see that? You see that? You feel that? That's the shift. 
adults, adults and adult psyche knows that they can create. A child believes that others create for them. And unfortunately, this isn't where this, this isn't where today we're supposed to go, but creative spirit has decided this is where it's going. <laughs> Adults are very rare in our society. Most, most are still operating on, under the idea they don't have it. They don't, they, there's something missing. They don't have it. I've got to find this or I've got to find a partner or I've got to download, I've got to, I've got to get this other thing to add to me because I'm incomplete. Who can see the huge contrast? One is problem solving. I've got to add complete. Myself. If you've got important questions, please put them in the Q&A box. There's 91 people on, so I'm missing them. I see there's four questions there. If you have something important for me to see, please put it in the, the Q&A box here live on Zoom. If you're watching the replay, um, pop, pop it under the video and tag me or something. So you see the, see the difference. One saying, I, I can do it. I'll create. And then one saying, I can't create. I've got to solve my, my own incompleteness. And these are like black and white, complete difference. And over here, you see all the true creators, right? They, they, they're not trying to fix themselves. They're just creating big outcomes that they want to create and and, uh, and then you have this whole other world of people that get lost trying to fix themselves or learn themselves into something new or, you know, everything else. So my goal is for you all to become creators, superconscious creators, where you're able to tap into the superconscious field, your true intuition, uh, choose, choose outcomes that you want. Notice where you are, take correct action. And whenever you make it personal, to simply treat it back to, uh, it actually doesn't change me. And to release all the childhood stuff as you're, as you're creating. I'm a super conscious creator hat. Yeah, they're good hats. I'll change, I'll change it for you, Dean. Superconscious creator. Superconscious creator. Let me look at some questions. That's better. Thank you, sir. You can see the hat. Do they come in pink? The shirts come in pink. Steph, do you, do you say that people like Eckhart Tolle, for example, had one instance in which he released all resistance? I, I don't want to go into, I don't, I've, I've never sat down and, and talked with him. So I don't want to speculate. Love you though. Um, Joel, so how do I change my structure? They keep getting triggered. Yeah, no, great question. So we must stay in this work of true creation and you will. It took me two years. It took me two years to shift my orientation, but I didn't have the magnetic mind process. I had to figure it out. I had to figure it out using uh, Colette's work, William's work, Richard's work, Dr. Flint's work. Um, plus alchemy to put it all together. So I know that you guys can go much faster than, than I did. Emery, so he's saying we have to have the experience of being lost so we can find out who we are. I'm saying we have to have the experience of a child to, uh, so I'd say that I'd, I'd agree with that statement 90%. I'd say we have to have the process of becoming an individual to, to, to be a human. So yeah, so yeah, I just wouldn't say lost. I'd say, uh, I'd say individual, but the rest of it I agree with, yeah. Sean, do you find it easier to create in nature? No, nah, I am in nature. I am a nature. I'm not separate from nature, you know? Yeah, I am, I'm a part of it. So, so if I was to say that, there'd be a, a, an underlying assumption that I, I wasn't in nature right now. Sarah, when you design a rite of passage initiation, or will you design for those who don't have a cultural, I love to have views, what's important to honor. Yeah, it's a good question. It's something on my mind. I know it's needed. And currently the work I'm doing now is the, is the antidote that I, that I believe is the, is the right, the right stuff. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. 
Magdalena, what is something motivating, inspiring we can think of when we lose motivation? You know, you, you're not, you're not so powerless that you need something outside of you to motivate you. See, if I was to answer that, now I would say that the anchoring process is a really great process. So I would suggest you take through the anchoring process. However, the feeling that I get from the question, which is what is something motivating, inspiring that we can think of when we uh, when we lose motivation, when I when I read into that question, there's an underlying assumption that I need motivation, or I should always be motivated. And, and the the truth is, is that you know, it's okay not to be motivated. You know, and you're not so powerless that some you need something out external of you to come in and and motivate. But anchoring is a really good tool if come from the right structure. Julia, when we create something like the artist making the picture, tell us how we create an image and not feel like it's part of us sort of be uh, empowered. When we create something like the artist making the picture, example, we should tell us how we create an image and not feel like it's part of us still to be empowered. Well, I, I guess the first step is becoming whole now. OK, and any time you're trying to create from a place that you're you're not whole. You're always going to think that this thing's going to change you. Is it true? Right. And so the idea is first to, to go, hey, you know, what? So, so let me tell you this. If you. If you made all the money in the world, but you weren't allowed to give it away, you just had all your bills covered. Um, yeah, all your all your bills, your food, like you just everything's good. Everything's good. You can, you want for nothing. What would you create? Thanks, Rob. See you soon, brother. What would you create? And then the 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 polar opposite of that. Who, you know, what would you be? Sorry, what would you be? What would you create? Like, what would you do? The polar opposite of that is if you lost everything, lost it all, relationships, family, money, like lost it all, what would you create? See, I don't know what you mean by that, Sean. I don't know what you mean by that. I tell you, when I realized no matter what, no matter what, I just want to teach. I just want to teach. That's it. Once you realize your truth of what you love, I know some of you going, hey, Chris, are we doing a recode? You've just been teaching for an hour. And that's how effortless it was for me. Do you guys want to know how many notes I have for today? I, I have two, two dot points. <laughs> oh, it's, it's just true. <laughs> this, this, is, this, is, this is me. This is me in my fullest expression. You can't, you, you know, you can take anything from me. I'll teach. I'll teach. And I love it. I love it. Lights me up. I'll teach. The Rolling Stones will sing. I'll teach. I'll teach. And so, so finding that and realizing, you know, that you get to create other things, do what you love is so good. Oh.